Well, good morning, folks. Welcome along to the vlog, and we're here in the brew shed again, downstairs in the little snug area. That's what we call it anyway. So yesterday we had a day off, essentially, keep the camera on me, come on, I'm rubbish at this. Uh, a day off the vlog because we spent a lot of time in the toilets painting. So let's go in there and uh, have a look what we did. So here we go. So you remember in here, it was all white and looked relatively sparse. Well now, we have some colour. We just have this little section to complete. We ran out of paint and time. So let's go into the gents first. Look at that for a beautiful colour. Way better than the white, I think. Just sets everything off nicely. I'm really pleased with how this looks. I think we picked the right colour and it's really tidied the place up considerably. Some things we can't do anything about, like the shoddy plumbing work down there, but hey, hell, I'll box it in at some point. And then also there's some more painting to do down this edge because we've got a water resistant undercoat there to prevent, you know, the urine splashes, which happens so we can wipe the wall down without washing the paint off. All of this paint as well is durable, hard wearing and washable paint. So we can wipe the walls down without fear of taking the paint off the walls. And you can see in here, yeah, we've got the old snoot shelf. That looks <laughs> spot on. A lot of comments, people saying there's probably gonna be someone snorting Charlie or something off of that shelf. Well, we don't really have that kind of clientele in our establishment, but you never know. The occasional knob jock might find his way in here and have a little bit of, uh, what's it called? Jazz powder. So yeah, I'm really pleased with how the color has worked in the gents and I think it's, it's a good, gentleman's colour and uh, really sets the whole place off. Don't you agree? I'm very pleased with it. Gets rid of that white. It was all in this white before and I didn't like it at all. So let's go into the ladies and have a look what we've done in there. Oh yes, quite a considerable change you might agree. Again we ran out of paint in here. We bought uh, five litres of paint to do both room, rooms and and uh, yeah we ran out just as we got to that last cubicle there but I think you know it sets the mirrors off on the walls when we've got the colour behind them it frames them almost might have to do something with this white door frame now that we've started maybe change it to one of these colours that are around these door frames. But yeah, I'm very pleased. It's just taking your eye away from how sparse and bland it all looked. And with the, again, snoot shelves, as they're gonna probably be christened, I think it looks just so much better by having a little bit of color on the walls. It really has set it off. Again, you can see the effects that we've got from the water resistant undercoat there kind of resisting the top coat a little bit but that's something that we can uh, remedy with just a couple more coats again all for the sake of health and hygiene so we can clean these back walls really easily without having to uh, take the paint off of course right so in that respect then I'm gonna go and get my paint brushes and uh, whatever else I'm gonna need and uh, then once this is complete and we've finished cutting in second coat on the walls then we're going to go outside and tackle a whole more whole load of new jobs should i say um i might be able to point one or two out of them out to you as we go into the unit now so quite a few jobs to be completed outside in the beer garden uh, starting with maybe the most obvious to me anyway I put this light up before we did the canopy obviously doesn't work so I'm gonna pull that light down here onto the side somewhere maybe just above the cigarette bin and maybe I'll get some of this trunk in as well 
and we'll pipe it to the other side. Oh, there's actually a light there, look, that I could come straight off and uh, install some more lighting around here. We do need to illuminate the beer garden a little better. A little bit of weeding to be done. Coping stones still need to be done for the top of the brick wall that we made, which is standing up really well, actually. One problem that we've discovered, and I kind of built round this, was that with the tree being here, we have experienced a little bit of heaving on the brickwork, and this section's lifted. But you'll note there's no bricks there. These aren't bricks, it's just one, two, and these courses on top. Because I knew this was gonna move and I can't chop the tree down because I don't have authorization to do so. So what I've done is made like a little bit of a bridge and if this cracks anymore, we just have to take like these one, two, three, four, five, six bricks off, chop the section out and then just rebed them. Not a problem. It's a completely independent of where these anchors are either side of the wall. So that heaving won't lift the rail and pull it off the wall. So I did build that in there as a bit of a contingency but as you can see already because it's winter and we've got the wind blowing on the tree it's moved it just that little bit some more jobs to be done here yeah we do have a bit of painting to be done on these sleepers a little bit of weeding a little bit of trimming back of this bamboo it's gone really mad so we'll have to tame that before the summer starts and then here where we've got the dray run as you can see still coming out there if you look just above that door we've got a gutter in which leaks considerably and I spot a tile sat on the edge of the gutter there so I think that's gonna be the culprit and then we also have to reinstate this extractor fan for the kitchen to function and at some point repair that fence properly so lots of jobs to be done so I think I might start with getting the big ladders out and see if they're tall enough to reach up there so I can get that slate down if not we're gonna have to come up with another solution well it's knocking on four o'clock we're just about to open the doors and yes we've got everything done taps cleaned nice and shiny everything back in position the old uh, turd smasher uh, bag, uh, bin, sorry for hygiene bags, plenty of toilet roll on the whole snoot shelf as they say. Uh, we put some door stops on the wall here to stop this banging. It's far too far away to put one down on the floor and uh, another reason why we can't fit them to the floor is well because there's a massive gap under the door so We've had to go along the route of kind of doing the old double up job on the wall there and it just just keeps it off the plaster work and the paint work, those, uh, those door stops. But yeah folks, I think that, some spare hygiene bags, that is going to be all she wrote in terms of toilets. We've got this area painted as well, looks loads better. I'm a really, really big fan of this blue. It's called Intense Blueberry, and the ladies is called Wild Orchid. Yeah, I really like the colour, actually. So, there we go, that's my hack job in the toilets. Well, complete, I'd say. Hello, Reg. Hello, Reggie. Reginald. Reginald D. Collie. Reginald D. Collie. Look at him. You are a good boy, aren't you, Reggie? Can you see those little prints in the background on the on the wooden floor there? That's where Reggie helped himself to some beetroot out of the bin and then proceeded to have pink wee for a whole day. Didn't you, Reg? You cheeky little pup. Reggie woo! You're trouble, young man, aren't you? Well, welcome back to the house. 
Oh, my head's so itchy from having this hat on all night, all day. Uh, yeah, welcome back to the house. There's a little bit of Reggie for you. I'm out here in the porch where the uh, the chiller is. It actually says it's 12.7 degrees in here, but uh, my hands have been outside in the cold all day. Well, we've sat in the office for the last two hours of the afternoon and there's no heating in the office. It's basically ambient temps in there. And it's cold, my hands are cold. And I thought, what can I have when I get home to warm me up? And then uh, it dawned on me that we've got the East Coast IPA on tap still at 7%. But I could indeed drink that. And I thought, no, you know what? I was sent quite a few beers the other side of Christmas. And it's sometimes difficult for me to get around to doing any beer reviews on the channel these days. But this one was made by a good friend of mine who lives in Retford. His name is Alan. And uh, he and I brewed a black IPA at Idle Valley Brewery once. And uh, he's been into the, uh, into the style ever since. So here's the beer. This is a sample that he sent me. Or brought me actually. Dropped it off at the brew shed. And uh, we've also got a red IPA, I think, as well, or a red ale, which we're going to delve into. Oh, look at the colour of the head. There we go. It is quite light indeed. Oh, that smells nice and hoppy, actually. So, Alan sent me also uh, some of his recipe details, so I kind of will know what I'm talking about, but. Uh, I'm just going to dive in first and have a bit of a drink. Now, we've pulled this out. I just did a natural pour to maintain a head on there. But the bubbles in this head are really quite nice and tight. Ignore the John Smith glass. It's oversized. That's why I like it. It holds more than a pint. Uh, yeah, really nice tight bubbles in that head. And that looks like it's going to hang around for a while. So let's have a smell. Well, I'm definitely getting some citrus notes out of it. it. Smells really nice on the nose. It smells beery with a little fruity hint in the background. Doesn't smell roasty or toasty or malty. It smells, if you shut your eyes, you would imagine that this was a summer beer. Let's have a drink. Oh. That is a very good beer. Wow. It's, it's clean. It's light. It's not stouty at all. I am getting a little hint of roast there on the flavour. But oh, it's very, very subtle, and uh, the biggest flavour impact I'm getting from this beer is the citrus notes on the back end, which I think is what Alan was going for. In fact, let me just set this aside and I'll just have a quick look at his message. Okay, so I've got all of the info here in front of me. I'm not going to give you his recipe verbatim because it is Alan's recipe after all. Um, but he sent me a message saying that the ABV of the black IPA is 4.1%. And uh, he's used Golden Promise Pale, a bit of fifth, Crystal 50, some Dextrin Malt, and some Midnight Wheat Malt, which he cold steeped. And I think that's obviously what's given the colour to the beer. And then we've got Magnum, Amarillo, Centennial, Citra, all in the hoppage and the citra and centennial were also in dry hop so yeah i'm really impressed with this mate it's definitely an ipa or a pale pale ale no it's not a pale ale because of the color but it's a pale ale flavor and the look of a black beer yeah indeed but it definitely tastes like an American Pale or an American IPA. It's hoppy as a bucket of frogs, as they say. Mmm. 
Right, well, that's really it for the day, folks. Um, if you'd like to stick around, I will be popping open his red IPA as well, which is 6.2%. Um, next, actually, but I don't want to just drink this beer, quaff it down for the sake of it. I want to savour it, of course. I think this might be one of the first beers that I've had from Alan, actually, so I'm really quite impressed. So if you want to hang around for five minutes and watch the next beer review, here it is. If not, thanks for joining me today on the vlog, and we'll do a little bit more of it again tomorrow. Cheers. Reginald, 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 Reggie, Reggie, Reggie. Bonus Reggie footage. Come on, Reg. Oh my goodness, Reggie. Reggie. The mop mad. But he gets a bit excited. He gets a bit excited, does little Reg. Oh, he's buggered off. Yeah, this is our tripod for the evening. We are on a tripod. I wonder if I could just spin round and show you maybe a leg or two just here. Here's the legs, but it's only a mini tripod. So we're struggling. Ugh. So let's pop you back up here. You hear that wind. As you can see, we obviously have got the bar in position now, which you all know about. But of course, we're back after the Christmas break and I didn't get any plastering or insulation done in here. I think it was a big ask. But well, we did get the suspended floor in, which is a treat. We just haven't, talking of treats, treated it yet. <laughs> right then, let's get stuck into this red IPA from Allen. Now this is at 6.2 on the percentile scale. And let's see how red it is. Not that I'm bothered. what colour it comes out at. I'm just bothered about the flavours. I've perhaps been... Here, yeah, Jemmy got a little bit excited down here, sweetheart. Would you like to just mop up that splash of urine? Eh? Yeah. <laughs> Classy fella. Classy fella. Right then, let's have a look. He's chasing your mop. Look, he's going to knock these things out. Reggie, you nutter. <laughs> right then, um, yeah, red IPA. Let's get back to it. So, pale malt, Munich malt, crystal 60, crystal 90, crystal 40, and pale rye. That's a red looking beer to me. Well done, Alan. I think you've hit the nail on the red. <laughs> and then we've got Chinook and Mosaic. So we've got for the hops, but lots of them by the looks of it. He's not given me the amounts, but the timings, 45, 30, 10, 5 on the boil, and then a four day dry hop. No doubt, knowing Alan, it won't have been five grams either. So yeah, again, you've done really well, mate, with your head retention. These are really thick looking, creamy, creamy heads in there. And uh, yeah, look at that. That's hanging around for some time, that is. Oh, the nose is a little bit minerally. I can't really get through the foam. Shall we drink it off first? Oh. That's nice. There's a bit of a... There's a bit of a woody note to the back of this one, though. Mmm. I wonder if it's the age of the beer, or is it all those crystal malts that you've used, potentially. It's not offensive in any, in any way, it's just a little bit kind of, I wouldn't say oaky. It's, but it's a bit more woody than that, it's not like the oak that you get in a, like, aged cider for instance you know that oakiness that you get from the western ciders or indeed from like a an oak aged beer for instance no it's not that kind of oaky it's more it's definitely more wood 
Waddy. Mm. And that kind of takes away from the hops a little bit. The mosaic's still there. It's, it's a difficult hop to suppress, is mosaic, but it's battling through. It is there. But no, this is not as good as the black IPA. Um, but yeah, it's better than some of my own brews, I can tell you that much. Mm. Colour's good. Yeah, only thing I don't like about it is that woody note, but hey, that's personal preference, right? So, Alan, I'd like to say thank you very much, sir, for providing me with two of your finely crafted home brews. And uh, thanks to everybody else who kind of stuck around for that extra review. We'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Let's tip this down sink. Joking.